Greetings folks, it's Professor Fiore back once again to help you with your study of electronics. In this video, we're going to take a look at Class B amplifiers distortion. Let's start with a fairly basic amplifier. Here we've got a pair of 3904-3906 complementary pair BJTs, a split bipolar power supply, plus and minus 15 volts, and we're using a couple of diodes for the bias here. As we saw in a preceding video, diode bias is a bit more stable than using a straight resistive bias. What I want to look at here is some little changes we might create in this bias setup that will impact the distortion, the total harmonic distortion of the amplifier. So I'm not talking about really gross distortion like clipping, but the subtle changes that we would see in the crossover distortion. So this is not what I would call a super hi-fi amplifier. It's a fairly straightforward kind of amplifier that you, know, you could build in lab. Um, I would not recommend that you put a loudspeaker here in place of our load. This thing is already pretty much at its limit as far as power is concerned. Uh, you put a NATO loudspeaker out here and you're pretty much guaranteed going to blow up these two transistors. So please don't do that. You could put one in series, loudspeaker in series with the 100 ohm load. Um, but, you know, you'll be able to hear it. It's not going to be, you know, blasting the neighbors or anything. Um, the, the 06 and the 04 are small signal transistors. So um, this is just an easy thing that you, you could build up in a simulator. You know, they're very popular. You're going to find them on pretty much any simulator. Um, sufficient for us to do our, our little investigation here, right? All right. So in other words, don't be trading in your home stereo. All right. So um, usually where we bias would be a few percent of uh, our maximum current, our, our saturation current, right? That would be the ICQ value. Just to give us enough of that idle to alleviate most of the crossover distortion. It's not going to get rid of all of it, but, you know, the good majority of it. We don't want to bias it too hot because then the idle power dissipation goes up, you know, the efficiency of the system goes down, so it's a little bit of a balancing act. Um, here, what we have is a 15 volt power supply. You know, if we have a, a big positive input over here, this transistor basically is going to be a short. It's in saturation. 15 volts appears across 100 ohms. And we're going to be looking at about 150 milliamps peak current. So for a bias, you know, we want a few percentage points of that, you know, a few milliamps basically of current, you know, five, maybe 10, something like that for our quiescent current. So I've thrown in um, a couple of 914 diodes, which would be um, you know, a reasonable match, not perfect, but a reasonable match for these two bipolars. Now, if these diodes had the identical curve, the current voltage curve was identical to that of the transistor, we would have ourselves basically a current mirror. In other words, whatever the current is down through here is the current we would see over here. So we could do a real quick approximation that of this 15 volts, almost all of it, 14.3 or so, is going to drop across our one and then 7 tenths across diode one. And a similar sort of thing on the bottom end, 7 tenths on diode two, and the remaining, you know, 14.3 or so sitting across our two. So we're looking at around 14 or so milliamps coursing down through here. I am ignoring the base currents, um, but just to give us, give us a ballpark idea. So if this was a perfect current mirror, we would also have 14 milliamps going down through T1 and T2, All right? That would be our idle current, that little um, biasing current. Now, some people would refer to this as a class AB amplifier because it's not strictly class B, but I think that's maybe a little misleading in some respects because it's just enough to get the, the non-ideal characteristic, this little... Um, you know, 0.7 volts, um, sort of get over that hump. That's the only reason why we're doing it. So um, call it a class B, call it a class AB. You know, it's, it's the same thing, really. It's just a slight modification on a theoretically pure class B, okay? All right. Um, so if we fire up a, um, 
a little analysis here, right? I'll just do a real quick DC analysis. We'll see where we are. So we've, okay, we've verified we don't have a perfect current mirror, right? That's 5.2 mils. Like I said, we should be seeing about 14 back here, which, you know, we could double check real quick. And sure enough, there you go. You know, the current of R1 is coming up at uh, just over 14, just about 14.3 milliamps, right? So that looks good. All right, we could do a couple of real quick checks elsewhere on the volts. This should be zero. We're getting, you know, three millivolts. This should be zero. We're getting 10 millivolts. All right, so far so good. All right, now let's go and check out, just to make sure that everything's good, we'll do a little transient analysis here. See what we get. All right, um, we have what appears to be some pretty nice sine waves. We'll put the... Uh, legend in here. So I don't really care about the waveform through the ammeter. We can ignore that one. That's this guy here. I really care about VN and, and V load. So here's VN, which is actually the slightly larger one. That's the two volts coming in. So V load, we can see we're losing just a little bit of signal. It's slightly asymmetrical, but it still looks like a pretty nice sine wave. I don't see any really grotesque bits of notch distortion, crossover distortion. All right, so this bias is apparently doing its job. All right, now let's go and um, do a do a um, distortion analysis and in uh, uh, and Tina Ti that's this Fourier analysis and the output function we're going to look at V load calculate and. This list over here, if you haven't tried this before, is for all of the different harmonics and so forth. But the thing I care about is the total. So I can see this is 0.35967, or we'll call it 0.36 roughly, percent. So not super hi-fi, 0.36%, you know, um, but it's, it's certainly not grotesque, right? Matter of fact, uh, at low frequencies, chances are if you have your stereo cranked up a bit, there's going to be way more distortion than that just from the loudspeaker, from the woofer. Um, that's really the weak link in the chain. But, you know, a hi-fi amplifier, we would expect uh, you know, something that's probably 10 times better than that. Okay, you know, 0, 0.0 something, 0, 0 0.00 something in terms of the distortion. All right, so 0 0.36, let's call it. All right. Okay, so... As I said, we might have um, a better match on these uh, diodes compared to the transistors. So, you know, the 914 isn't bad. What else might you have kicking around in your, in your lab, right? Well, you might have some 4000 series uh, rectifying diodes, right? So let's go and uh, alter those guys. Some 4,000 ones. This is actually a worse match than the 914 is. All right, let's see what happens with the distortion. All righty, grab V load, calculate. And there we are, we went from 0.36 to 0.45. So match isn't quite as good. I'm sure if we check the current, right, the current's not going to be matched up nearly as well as uh, what we saw last time. We can do a real quick check on that. Yeah, we had like five milliamps before, so now we're only down about three. Not quite as good, right? Just not quite as good. All right, let's go turn those back to where they were, the 914s. So we can see that the diodes do make a difference. All right, I'm not going to go through all of the diodes. Certainly we could, if we uh, were careful about it, we could probably find a, a nicer match than the 914, but um, we're just trying to illustrate what's happening here. All right, so this is where we started. Now, the other thing is this whole idea of the current mirror. All right, if we had a perfect match, this current and this current would be, would be spot on. And as I said, you know, we want a, uh, an idle current over here that's a few percent of the max. So, 
All right, you know, if I if I change these resistors, so let me change these from, from 1K to 10K, that's going to have an impact. And you're saying, well, how? I mean, after all, wouldn't we still be getting 7 tenths across these diodes? Wouldn't that still turn these on? Well, yes, but remember, when we talk about 7 tenths on these diodes, that's an approximation. You know, it's a little bit more, a little bit less. It all depends. So by putting in a larger resistor, what ends up happening is this creates a smaller current. So that 14.3 volts or so that we had is now dropping across 10K instead of 1K. So that current's going to go down by a factor of 10, basically. And that current, of course, passes through D1 and D2 which produces a slightly, very slightly, but a slightly smaller voltage. And that slightly smaller voltage is reflected over here in the base emitters of transistor 1 and transistor 2. So that will, in fact, lower what the quiescent current is for T1 and T2. And consequently, it should, if everything works out, right, it should make the distortion a little bit worse. So uh, let's do, just to cross check that, right? Let's check our DC. And we can see, yeah, we went from a few milliamps down to you know, a couple hundred microamps. That's where we're sitting now as far as the, uh, the idle current, all right? All right, let's go, um, just for fun, we'll do a transient analysis and just see what it looks like. Probably not gonna look terrible, right? You know, looks pretty much the same. Subtle forms of distortion, you know, when you're talking under 1% THD, it's hard to see that with your eye. You know, the untrained eye, you look at it and you say, mm, looks like a sine wave to me, okay? You're gonna need um, in lab special test equipment to measure that out. Or in our simulator, right? We can come down, come down here and get our Fourier series and take a look. All right, so once again, let's grab V load. Now remember, when we had the 914s last time with 1Ks, we had about 0.36% total harmonic distortion. And now, hey, we're at 2%. So that's a sizable increase in THD. Right, and you go from 0.36 to 2%. So we can see that clearly makes a difference, right? So if we want our distortion to be low, we want good matches. On, on the uh, diode curves and the transistors, primarily so that we can get a good, predictable, stable um, que uh, quiescent current out, out here. And at the same time, we don't want to put in too large a resistor out here, you know, which you might be tempted to do to keep your input impedance very high. You know, that would be sort of a, um, let's call it a, sort of a preemptive thought. You're thinking, hey, I want to keep my Z in kind of high so it doesn't load the preceding stage. Let me make these big resistors. But we can see, yeah, if you make them too big, uh, the current's going to go down. That's going to affect the way these guys match out on the diode voltage and the VBE voltage. And distortion is going to go up. So we have to play a little balancing game. You know, I'm sure if we lowered these you know, below the 1K, you know, if we brought them down to 500 ohms or a couple of hundred ohms or something like that, we could probably get even lower THD, but you know now you're looking at a ridiculously low input impedance. I mean, what's the point of having an input impedance that's no no higher, or as a matter of fact, even possibly lower than what your load is? You might as well just you know directly connect the load um, back here. All right, all right. So definitely we can see some effects. There are other things that can go into affecting the distortion. Um, but these are things that are often ignored. So to recap, be careful with the selection of your diodes. Don't make that current too small. We wanna get that uh, idle current to be a few percent of the saturation current. Alrighty, see you next time.